Hello, I'm Thomas. And uh, I'm not Manuel, I'm Thomas. And um, I'm a plant biochemist. I spent the last 16 years studying photosynthesis and plant metabolism. And uh, honestly, I never considered it a boring job until I learned that other people spend their time swimming in sharks. <laughs> and um, so my, my main focus is, is really on plants, and I, I started to, to work on photosynthesis of other organisms as well a couple of years ago. And this is what the talk is about, it's in, in about photosynthesis of corals mainly, but there are also other aspects that I want to show you today. And um, the company I'm coming from is uh, BLV. BLV is a small lighting company. And we have basically two major segments where we're active. One is horticulture, which is our, our bigger part of the business, and uh, aquaristic, where we are best known for our metal highlight lines. <clears throat> and um, when you talk about lighting, you, you usually talk about four different aspects of lighting. So uh, the first aspect is the color temperature. And I will go later more into detail what that means. The second very important aspect, especially in uh, corals, is uh, the fluorescence that you can stimulate with light things. <clears throat> but the most, the more important points are the light quality and uh, eventually the light intensity, which is the most dominant aspect of lighting. And only if you get all of these four different aspects right, you have actually the desired effect of lighting. <clears throat> and when you look at the coral reef, Tank, you're basically facing a situation that is quite unique in the lighting field, and that is that you have a multitude of species that get together, and these species they don't agree on what is a good lighting. So, first and foremost, you have the coral itself, which is a photosynthetic um, organism. The coral itself is simple as an animal, but it has a symbiote that is photosynthetic reactive. You have fish, and you have mammals, and you have mammals inside and outside, and uh, the visitors might not at all agree with what is a good lighting. And you have to somehow find a compromise between this and you have to bring all of these different aspects into one light. <clears throat> so the, the organism that is maybe the least of your concern is the fish. But nevertheless, fish have sensors for light. They can see light, they respond to light. And uh, here are three different aspects that they have. The pigmentation can change if, if you get the lighting wrong. They have a day and night cycle, which is very important for the health. And of course, the, the reproduction of fish depends on the light. So if you have problems in your nursery, you might actually consider looking into this. But I want to skip this because it's a, it's a special topic. So let's come to the coral. The coral itself is, is as I said, is an animal, but it shares its life with a, with a little organism that is the symbiodinium. And the symbiodinium is living within the coral cells. And it has a photosynthesis apparatus that is very, very similar to the plants. So actually, they are they're quite close relatives. And this photosynthesis <coughs> apparatus produces nutrients for the corals, and it's, it's uh, ready to share them with the, with the host. In the epidermis of the coral itself, you find a protein that's called GFP, and GFP is a green fluorescence protein. And this protein can convert incoming uh, short wave light into fluorescence light, and this gives this bright fluorescence color to the corals that the epicorator wants to have. The exact function, function of the GFP is not really known, so people think that it's a photoprotective mechanism that it actually protects the coral from very high light intensities, but there is no really strong evidence that supports it. <clears throat> so, photosynthesis is a very crucial. Um, metabolic pathway in corals, it provides about 60 to 70% of the nutrients. If photosynthesis fails, your coral most likely will die sooner or later. And uh, one of the reasons why it might fail is actually if you get the light conditions wrong. <clears throat> so what are good light conditions? And uh, if you look into nature, there's a clear correlation to light intensity in coral growth. So the, the majority of coral reefs are actually in the areas where the light intensity is pretty, pretty high. So you have some exceptions in the Arctic and so on, but normally corals grow in places where it's, where it's quite bright light. And uh, the, one of the most spectacular sites of corals, which I unfortunately never visited, is uh, the Red Sea. 
where you find uh, the majority of corals that you find in a coral tank, they actually come from there. And uh, there you have light intensities far above 1,000 microgram per square meter second, which is pretty high. And um, so th they obviously uh, need these. And this can be demonstrated in a very simple experiment. So if you take um, uh, measurements on the water, and you measure the light levels on the water, you, you observe the corals that live under these different light conditions, and you see that there's a clear correlation between light intensity and growth. So the lower the light intensity, the slower the coral growth. <clears throat> Why do they do that? There's another very clear correlation, and that is between light intensity and photosynthesis of the symbiont. So if you increase the irradiance um, up to 1,000 micromole, you see that the photosynthesis of the symbiodinium is increasing almost uh, in a linear way until it reaches a plateau, and it doesn't do any, any additional light you add, doesn't do anything, until you go get to a point where it actually starts declining again. And this is a point that we call photoinhibition. So this is the kind of point where you have too much light, the photosynthesis apparatus gets damaged, it gets really damaged, so you, uh, so you cannot repair this anymore, and then eventually the, the symbiodinium either die or they leave the coral, and that uh, can be one of the causes of, of bleaching. Some people measure also in photosynthesis research, they measure instead of the amount of oxygen that is produced, they measure the, the chlorophyll <laughs> fluorescence, and they claim that this point is actually much earlier. <clears throat> so there's no clear reason why these two different measurements don't agree. So there's clear evidence that too much light can be dangerous, but you need lights in order to get them to grow. <clears throat> so what is What's happening if you get it wrong? Well, sooner or later the coral will adapt to any kind of light condition. So this has also been shown in literature many, many times. So if you take a coral from one from one place in the coral reef and you place it into another coral reef and it survives this, this uh, transfer, it will adapt to the light conditions. But this process might take quite some time. And uh, I couldn't find any data in the literature how long this period of time can be. So people claim it can be a couple of days, up to a couple of years, we don't really know. <clears throat> so how to prevent this? And one way to prevent it is if you if you think about changing the light from metal halide to, to LEDs or generally rebuild your coral reef tank, I would highly recommend you to get a good lighting plan. And the lighting plan is <clears throat> basically an, an in silico um, simulation about the light in, in your aquarium. And for this, you have a very important information on, on any kind of light source you buy. Uh, that's the luminous flux. So that, that's the amount of light that, that your light source actually emits. And uh, traditionally, this is given in lumen, and every lumen can be recalculated into micromole. And micromole is a unit that we use to, to evaluate the effect of light and photosynthesis. So you usually have a core, and you have a kind of factor that helps you to, to convert one unit into another. <clears throat> and this unit, this is what we use to make lighting plants. And here's an example of a lighting plant from an aquarium. So that's the top view in an aquarium. Where you see the light distribution when you put fixtures in different places, and you usually get a, a plant where you have a color code that indicates you which which spot of the aquarium you have, which light intensity. And um, you can make these kind of simulations for any kind of scenario. You can put the, the lamps in different places, you can change the beam angle, you can change the light source and so on. So you can play around with these and, and they are pretty accurate. The only problem of these lighting plants is they are always two dimensional. So they don't tell you really what's going on under water. But it's the best that we can offer at the moment. So we were working on three dimensional lighting plants and uh, our physicists, they almost turned crazy when I told them that they should develop something like that. But they're working on it, and I'm pretty sure one day they will have. So, <clears throat> second most important aspect of light is light quality. And light quality is basically the light distribution that you have through the different wavelengths. So that means the spectrum of the light. Why do we call it quality? We call it quality because it, it is the, the dominant factor of how light is perceived. So in a, in a biological context, it means how good is the photosynthesis under this light. And here are different curves that I put into one graph. And this is, this is the, the rate of photosynthesis 
on the different base maps. So you can see the different uh, photosynthetic um, organisms like green algae and red algae, they have different different curves. So that means different base lengths have a different effect on, on the photosynthesis. And this is a this is a phenomenon that is that is due to the to the pigments that they produce. So when you look at the phylogenetic tree, you see that uh, red algae and green algae are very closely related, but they have a completely different photosynthesis absorption curve. And <clears throat> once this absorption curve is known, you can basically, as a life plan, you can go there and, and design uh, a spectrum that fits very well to this curve. So here, in, again, in green is, is shown the, the photosynthesis absorption curve of a, of a symbiodinium, of an average. I mean, there is a, is a plethora of, of different organisms that, that we summarize in this, this one term. But on average, this is, this is how the photosynthesis curve looks like. And you see here is the, the metal halide spectrum of the coral LED that fits pretty much into this, into this range. And uh, an LED spectrum that we designed recently, which is currently a field test in an aquarium where they measure the growth of corals on the spectrum, fits also very well to this curve. <clears throat> so this is something we can do in a computer, but this doesn't mean that it actually works in reality. So you always have to test it. And um, the, the reason why the photosynthesis curve is like that in, in these organisms is becomes clear when you compare the light conditions underwater with the photosynthesis curve. And if you if you dive in the ocean, you see that the deeper you, you dive, the more the light gets depleted of red light. So it, it turns into, into a direction of blue and green light. But if you are in, uh, close to coasts in coastal waters, Basically, blue light and, and red light is absorbed, and that's that's due to the fact that there are um, microorganisms swimming in the water that absorb um, red and blue light, and there's also reflection from sand, which, which shifts the whole light into, into a greenish area. And um, this these two light conditions is what we call internally deep blue and reef green. And the reason why we call it like that is when you look into aquariums, you basically find usually these two different types of scenarios. You find either uh, a tank that is deep blue, it's a fish, they, they, when they swim around there, they, they appear to come out of nowhere. It gives a very majestic, meditative appearance. <coughs> then you have reef green, on the other hand, which is a lighting condition which which gives a, which enhances the colors of the fish, which gives this kind of vibrant uh, life to the coral reef. And um, these two light conditions can be put into uh, a figure, which is on the left hand side, uh, on my side and right hand side. So it's basically every color has an X and Y coordinate. And these charts are used to describe the, the light conditions. And deep blue has a particular X and Y coordinate in there, and green green as well. And these light um, conditions are very, very important to keep in mind. And that's what we call color temperature. Because this color temperature is, is basically the scale you see there on the right hand side. Um, gives you an idea how is the atmosphere that you create when you can use this light. So on the right hand side you see a picture of an aquarium. We have deep blue metal highlight on the left hand side. And we have uh, an LED light which is yellowish. And, in, and the atmosphere is completely different. So this is the, the second aspect of the photosynthesis that you have to keep in mind that the visitor expects one of these scenarios. And if you get this scenario wrong, it might be fantastic for you for the corals, but it is not what your visitor might expect. And um, <clears throat> that leads to the to the question that is discussed very often is do you need red light or not? <coughs> yeah, red light is great when you compare it with the photosynthesis curve, yeah, it gives the additional uh, little peak on the wavelengths between six and 700 nanometer, but it shifts the, your, your color temperature or your, or your color coordinates from this red line that I put there, which is the deep, deep blue, you can see the deep blue into a pinkish area, and that would make your whole coral tank appear pinkish. And uh, <clears throat> just visited an aquarium where the curator has exactly that. He has a, a pinkish red aquarium and he really loves it, so he's absolutely happy with this, but it's an exception, normally people don't want it. Normally people want to have a light condition that is that is pretty close to, to the light condition you would actually see in nature. So that brings me to, 
to one of the aspects that is particular for corals, and that's fluorescence. And fluorescence is a, a phenomenon that um, comes through a protein that is expressed in the, in the epidermis of the corals itself. And this, this is a protein that can capture light and emit a light of a different wavelength. So usually the, the most common protein is GFP, and GFP takes um, blue light, which is a picture of the spectrum on the, on the right hand side, and emits green light. <clears throat> and you see a picture down there in the corner where you see this blue light shines into it, and you're rewarded with green light. There also, there's also a red fluorescence protein, which uses greenish light and emits red light. And these are the two most common proteins you find in nature, but there are like hundreds of others. So depending on what kind of species you have, what kind of light conditions you have, you can change this kind of fluorescence experience and you can basically create a completely different appearance of your corals. So that leads me to the, to the last slide, and that is that with LEDs nowadays, we have we have the possibility to add a fifth dimension, and that is next to color, uh, color temperature to fluorescence, to light quality and light intensity, you can also create sceneries. You can really influence the way how your, your, your tank appears to the public. You can uh, shift between a day scenery and a night scenery. You can add moonlight, you can get sunrise to it. And of course, this, this opens a uh, the vast majority of people will be very excited about this because it opens a new box where you have a, a toolbox where you can where you can uh, grab into it and, and get your uh, get out of it whatever you want. But it's also a kind of a Pandora's box. So, so it's like when you do this, you tend to overdo it. So it's something that you should do it in a very careful way. Otherwise, you will end up in a kind of Disneyland of Australia, which we can also see very often nowadays. So that's why I recommend you, no matter what kind of uh, what kind of lighting you have in mind, no matter what kind of uh, supplier you go to, I and mean, the uh, is not the only supplier, there are also others in the market. Keep in mind that the four points are the most important point you need to get right. If you get this wrong, you are completely on the wrong side. The fifth point is something that we offer you in addition. Use it carefully, wisely, and then it will be in a pretty good site. Thank you very much.